and then the process started okay so the process was so long i'm not joking you guys the process was so long just being able to compile the documents my channel my name is melissa for those who are new here and today's video i want to make it as detailed as i possibly can but i also don't speak it too long so i'm gonna try compress it but as detailed as i possibly can um it's going to be mostly about uh, my whole immigration situation and exactly my story what happened to me i'm not referencing anybody else just because everybody has their own journey and what happened to them yeah and i'm mostly not mostly i'm 99.9 percent .9 going to be talking about the student visa because i have had somebody ask me about the canadian visitors visa but i literally i don't have enough information on it for me to actually speak on it publicly you know what i'm saying so i'm just gonna stick to student visa and i actually had to write things down just because i didn't want to i didn't want to misquote anything or basically give you guys a wrong story or the wrong information and let me stop talking and actually start the video so the first thing i did was i identified the school i wanted to go to and how i did that is I was already attending so many of the university fairs that were going on in Nairobi. Um, they usually have them at Sarita lot and Diamond Plaza. So actually I found this, the school that I'm in, um, I attended the university fair that was going on in Diamond Plaza. And it's funny because the, guy, the man that I met who was representing the school he portrayed the school so well i was instantly like yeah that's the place for me so yeah that's what happened and then i applied to the school so for most universities i'm gonna say you always have to pay an application fee um so that's what i did and then sent in so that you know okay let me be realistic yeah i didn't want to do the typical thing of applying to so many universities because let's be honest as in that's money you're always trying to in any situation you're always trying to save money yeah so i just i literally applied to just this school and luckily i got in so i got my let offer letter so the first letter you receive is your offer letter um i received it 20 on christmas day yes i remember i received it christmas day of 2021 and then you cannot use you can't use your offer letter to apply for your visa so your offer letter indicates that for my school at least i don't know about other universities so for my school i got my offer letter and i had to pay deposits of my school fees for me to receive my accept my acceptance letter so that's what i did and then from there now that's what you use to start your application to actually apply for a visa you need your acceptance letter not your offer letter so that's the first thing i'm gonna clarify um so i got my offer letter i think maybe first week of january and then the process started okay so the process was so long i'm not joking you guys the process was so long just being able to compile the documents took so much time but i compiled everything and sent my documents by end of march so around 27th of march that's when i sent in my documents so now i want to like actually state the documents that i that my family and i compiled yeah so that we could send over so just a disclaimer I did actually use an agency and I used AHEC agency in Nairobi. They're located, um, 
the back side of junction so that's riara road yeah just riara road a heck agency i'm oh, sorry i'll put it somewhere on the screen um so if you do want to use an agency i would highly i would highly recommend them just because they're so they know how they know exactly what they're doing let me put it like that they're very good at that job and it's not they're not it's not funny business they're very legit and they're very good at what they do so let me stop talking so much yeah because i don't want the video to be long um so the list of documents that i compiled so of course the first thing and sorry disclaimer i'm going to highly suggest that you literally print out everything you can never be you can never have too much information so you'd rather have too much too much rather than you reach the airport and they're asking you for this and this and that and you don't have it yeah so you'd rather be over prepared that's basically what i'm trying to say so print out everything so um the first thing that i printed out was my acceptance letter and the second thing was the confirmation of payment so the receipt that i received from paying the tuition deposit that's what i printed and then from there my agency did recommend that i i, I do my medicals before submitting my documents to ircc so ircc is the it's like the immigration situation for canada if you want to apply to canada you always have to go through ircc and you have to create an account on their page so you just literally go search on google ircc it will pop up yeah okay so then um so that's another thing i did so i've talked about acceptance letter confirmation of payment and then my medicals i went and did my medicals it's a place called is it iom something like that in nairobi it's um sides of village market yeah those sides um and they submit your documents to ircc directly so you don't have to do anything once you get your medicals done they submit it immediately um but i did print out a copy of my receipt of payment and some there's another document you're given so i also printed that out and then again on the ircc portal there's a document you're going to have to fill in there's many documents in there i if i'm remembering correctly or maybe like two or three just personal information you fill in all of that stuff so one of the things i had to fill in was family information form something of that sort and yeah it's just like do you have siblings who are your parents what do they do what do your siblings do if they're working stuff like that um so yeah fill that in as well submitted it and then now when it comes to oh yeah and um as the student like now as me submitting my my documents i had to write a letter of intent so basically a letter of intent is what are you actually going to do in canada so you have to state why you're going to canada why you chose the school you're going to um what else are you planning on coming back to nairobi or wherever you're from that's the information that's going to be in your letter of intent so that's what you basically have to write that letter and then now when it comes to the person who's going to be paying your school fees they also need to compile their documents as well so one of them is bank statements now here's the thing um i'm not entirely comfortable talking about bank statements online just because i feel like it's such a personal thing but um what i can say about bank statements is depending on your institution which whichever school you decide to pick your bank statement has to show that you can provide financially for an entire year and then some <laughs> literally so it has to show that it has to have the school fees worth one full year plus it has like an estimate of 
of living expenses rent stuff like that so it has to be one year plus yeah for it to be approved because as um at least what i know is there have been people who submitted bank statements that was exactly one year of education and they got denied so what my agency advised was have have one year plus yeah so that's another thing and then so they have to provide bank statements proof of assets proof of assets is just do you own any land do you own an apartment do you what you know what i mean stuff like that so proof of assets and then they also have to write a letter of support so a letter of support is basically them saying that yes i agree um this person should go to canada i can provide for them stuff like that and then what else letter of support proof of employment as well so yeah they have to provide proof of employment and a copy of their passport even i had to provide a copy of my passport so all these documents i printed them out and i also printed out my vaccine certificate but i'm not sure if i presented it anywhere i'm actually not sure about that part but yeah just print out as much as many documents as you want <laughs> yeah let me put it like that and then um when it came to traveling so those are the documents that i submitted to ihcc and then there were i added like like two documents no like one document for traveling which was i just printed out exactly where i was going to stay just because i had had I had had I I had had yeah of people being asked okay so you've come to Canada where are you going to stay like show us proof of where you're going to stay so I remember I had to print out like a receipt of my Airbnb that I had booked so that's just me being extra so just do whatever you can just provide as much as you can is the best thing I can say so long story short um i submitted all my documents end of march around 27th of march and then i got requested for my biometrics i think early may then submitted my biometrics on may 10th so may 10th is when you actually start counting how long your visa has taken to come out so you don't start counting so now for me i didn't start counting from march 27th because that's a waste you start counting immediately you submit your biometrics so from may 10th i waited three months until end of august mid august end of august mid august and then i got sent for my passport request letter and then submitted my passport and got it back in i think maximum a week or it was three days but it didn't take long but i ended up getting deferred so i didn't make it for the september intake i ended up coming in january because it took too long it took too long if i got my visa in early august i would have made it for the september intake but things happen for a reason you know um what else yeah so those are the documents that's the document section and what you need or what i needed and what i prepared if is there anything else in terms of documents oh yeah i also printed out since i got deferred i printed out my new letter of acceptance just so that there's no conflict of there's no conflict like you know you submitted and you said you're going to go to school in september why are you at the airport in january or december you know what i mean so yeah i printed out that as well um what else i think that's it for documents 
um, I'm going to make a part two because I don't want to make this video long but I'm going to make a part two video of now um, the journey itself so what happened at the airport the questions I was asked um, what else yeah just stuff like that I hope I've not forgotten any other document but that's that's it for now wait for part two where i'm gonna tell you guys story time of my journey at the airport the questions i was asked and stuff like that so yeah i hope you like the video and i hope the inf the video has been helpful and has answered your questions yeah i'm gonna leave it at that yeah see you at part two